Okay, so Grok4 is here and this thing looks pretty incredible. Now this video is going to be some of my quick thoughts on this release. Now the first thing, benchmarks. So it's state of the art on almost all the benchmarks that they have shared, which is a pretty huge achievement. Given that Grok3 was never state of the art, although we could say a lot about these benchmarks. Now, one that they specifically highlighted was this Humanities Last Exam, where it does a whopping 44.4%. And in fact, I think in one case, they showed that you can go up to 50%, which is pretty incredible. However, we can't compare it directly with the other models because the other models do not have access to tools. Now, having said that, it's still a really impressive model, even if you give access to tool or a multi-agent system. Because at the moment on Arc AGI 2, this is the best performing model. It's achieving 16%, which is state of the art. And most of the other models, if you see, they are less than 10%. In fact, the best Cloud Opus 4 was only 8%. We already have some independent tests. This one is from Artificial Analysis intelligence index where grok3 mini was only 67 but grok4 right now is 73 which makes it the best state-of-the-art model out there so how exactly did they achieve this the main component is rl compute along with the data and the tools that you provide to the model so between grok3 and grok4 they had 10x more rl compute that is post training pre-training seems to be very similar for both models. And this gives us an indication that we can squeeze a lot more out of these LLMs if we have enough compute with proper RL. So they actually have three different variants. One is simply pre-trained model with some RL, and this achieves about 27% on the humanities last exam, which is equivalent to or close to Gemini 2.5 Pro. Next, the added tool usage which is, I think, the normal Grok4 that is going to have the ability to use tool. And you can see that with tool usage, the performance goes and was almost 40% improvement without tool usage. But the next one is a multi-agentic system where you have multiple agents with multiple different tools, and they were able to push it to almost 50% on humanity's last exam. Now, Humanities last exam was supposed to be one of the hardest exam that was released earlier this year. And we already have models which are able to push it to almost 50%, which is an incredible pace of improvement. But all of this is going to come with a price. So the Croc Heavy or Super Croc Heavy is going to be about $300 per month, which is, I think, a huge amount of money. There is a Super Croc, which is going to be $30 per month. Still, this is probably the most expensive LLM that you can use. Now, during the live stream, they did not focus on coding because there is going to be a separate coding model that is coming up in a few weeks. Right now, they release Grok4. There's going to be a specific coding model. And I think it's a, the right strategy because for coding, you want low latency models and probably they are focusing on low latency. Then there's going to be a multi-model agent and then even a video generation model. Now let's look at the pricing. So this has a 256 tokens context window. The pricing is very similar to Grok3. In fact, it's exactly the same, which is actually pretty good because they are able to keep the pricing the same. However, we don't know whether this is just the base Grok4 or Grok4 heavy with tools. So this will be interesting to see. But now let's look at some independent analysis, which is always important, especially the ARC AGI 2. So here's a tweet or post from Greg, who is the president of ARC Foundation. So he says, somebody from XAI reached out to them that we want to test Grok 4 on AGI. They actually did their own evaluation or testing policy. No data retention model checkpoint must be intended for public use a temporary increase in remit limitlets for burst testing, right? Now, this is good because there was a drama of LM Arena a few months ago where they uh, gave access to the meta team, I believe, who scored a specialized model for chatbot Arena leaderboard. So this is good that they are actually taking this seriously. 
So he says, first, the facts. Crockford is now the top performing publicly available model on Arc AGA. This even outperforms purpose built solution submitted on Kaggle, which is pretty incredible. Second, Arc AGA 2 is hard for current AI models. To score well, models have to learn a skill from the scenario of training examples, then demonstrate that skill at test time. The previous best model was Opus which had only scored 8%. Now, this almost doubles that, which is pretty incredible. Now, if you're curious what type of questions are in ARC AGI 2, so here are a few examples, which I think are going to be pretty easy for a human, but still these models are struggling a lot. As pointed out by Mike Noop, who actually shared this, so he says perhaps the most unintuitive thing about the AI today is that an AI can simultaneously score 50 plus on humanity's last exam, relatively hard for humans, while only scoring 16% on ARC AGI2, which is relatively easy for humans. And uh, he shared a couple of these examples. I'm actually not sure whether this is based on GROC4 heavy or just a normal GROC4 version. So in ARC AGI, by this post, it seems like it's just the GROC4 thinking probably doesn't have access to tools. Okay, the second post is from Artificial Analysis who ran independent testing, which is always very important. So they say, we have run our full suite of benchmarks and Graph4 achieves an Artificial Analysis Intelligence Index of 73, which outperforms OpenIO 3, Gemini 2.5 Chrome. And I think there were some rumors that some people saw Gemini 3 and Gemini CLI. So it will be interesting to see how Gemini 3 performs. We might have expedited timestamp for GPT-5 GPT and Gemini 3 now. Then they go on to say, this is the first time that Elon Musk XAI has the lead at the frontier. And then Grok 3 scored competitively with the latest models from OpenAI, Anthropic and Google. But Grok 4 is the first time that our intelligence index has shown XAI in first place. And you do have to give them credit because XAI was probably the last team they started a Gen AI or LLM training. And seems like they have taken lead on everybody else. This is a reminiscence of what happened with Gemini. It started off really bad in the BART days, right? And now it was supposed to be the state of the art, but now we have Grok 4, which is pretty incredible. So I guess with enough compute, data, and talent, you can actually train state-of-the-art models. Then they say, we tested Grok 4 via the XAI API. The version of Grok 4 deployed for use on X or Twitter may be different to the model available via API. Consumer application versions of the LNM typically have instructions and logic around the model that can change style and behavior. Right? And that's, I think, very important to consider because the model that is going to be available on X or Twitter may not be the same model or similar behavior. Although they had a pretty bad few days with Croc 3 going a little crazy. Okay, so Croc 4 is a reasoning model, so it thinks before answering. The XAA API does not share reasoning tokens generated by the model, right? So unfortunately, this is becoming more of a standard today. None of the API providers offer or enable reasoning tokens through the API, which is really unfortunate. I think only models out of China are giving you the raw tokens. So that's basically like a lot more open than what we have in the Western world. And then they talk about that Croc 4 pricing is exactly the same as Croc 3, which is pretty great. So it's very similar to Cloud4 Sonnet, but more expensive than Gemini 2.5 Pro. And also O3. Now, it will be interesting to see how many people are actually going to be using Croc4 through the API, especially for enterprise applications. Because I think mostly it's either OpenAI, Gemini, or Cloud at this point. Okay, so the key benchmarks, Croc4 leads in not only our intelligence index, but also coding index. And keep in mind that we are not talking about the specialized coding model yet, but still it does really great. An all-time high score in GPQA, a diamond of 88%, 
representing a leap from the Gemini 2.5 Pro's 84. So that is a pretty substantial lead in this case. Then they are again talking about the humanities last exam. And then I think speed itself. So 75 output tokens per second slower than O3 Gemini 2.5 Pro, which are pretty awesome. This seems to be the slowest, actually probably better than Opus 4, but overall much slower compared to other Frontier models. So based on this independent test, it's one of the best model out there. Now, seems like sleeping in the office finally paid off. So here's an interesting tweet. You can laugh at, ex at folks sleeping in the office tents or grinding till 4.20 a.m. on weekends, but you have to admit they are the fastest moving AI lab out there. And I totally agree with him. Okay, so this was a quick recap of everything that we know about Grok 4 right now. They also have a vice mode and probably it's going to be a lot more liberal compared to some of the other offerings. Do let me know if you get a chance to test the model out and what is your experience. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.